Welcome to Qatar. Where do I even start? Qatar is the compact and mighty peninsula of the Middle East. From crystal clear waters and windy desert dunes to the futuristic skyline of Doha, this is where rich culture and history meet the perks of modern living. Qatar is a treasure trove of unique experiences. With so much to do and explore, planning your trip to Qatar can be a little overwhelming. But that's where I come in. My name is Hamid Al-Ammari, and as a Qatari, I'll be your guide showing you how to best explore my beautiful country. Qatar is right here in the Middle East, connecting the eastern and western sides of the world. Being a peninsula, we share most of our borders with the Arabian Sea but we have one land border with Saudi Arabia in the south part of our country. The eastern city of Doha is Qatar's capital. This is where Hamad International Airport is. So this city will be your first introduction to the country and likely where you will spend the majority of your trip. Now, as locals, for us, Doha is when we refer to the whole country. So sometimes you might hear me say Doha when I really mean Qatar. Take a look at this map of Doha. Let's break it down even more to learn about the areas you'll be visiting. With unparalleled views of the Doha skyline and the Arabian Sea, the seven kilometer long corniche is not only an attraction on its own, but it's a gateway to several vibrant districts of the city. It connects the old Doha districts to the new Doha downtown. It's also home to the country's finest museums, the National Museum of Qatar, and the Museum of Islamic Art. Very close by is the Al Souq district where you find Souq Waqif. It is the oldest market in the country. It's the heart of a bustling traditional local market full of gold, pearls, and souvenirs. Souq Waqif gets its name from an old practice. Souq is Arabic for market, and Waqif is Arabic for standing. And the practice was they would trade while standing. So the main promenade in the Souq is filled with coffee shops, and it's filled with places to hang out. But the real market is tucked away in these alleyways. And as soon as we get in, you'll notice the old feeling that this thing has been here for a while. Next to the Souq, you'll find Msherb Downtown Doha, a sustainable downtown regeneration project. It's a breezy, pedestrian-friendly neighborhood full of hotels, restaurants, and boutiques. And it's also home to Doha's burgeoning design district. North of the Corniche, the skyscrapers of West Bay host some of the city's best hotels and dining and shopping options. Further north, the Katara Cultural Village is the city's community hub, featuring Katara Art Center, a Greek-inspired amphitheater, and a stretch of public beach. The Pearl, built entirely on reclaimed land on the waters of the Arabian Sea, is a luxurious destination for leisure activities. It's also one of the hottest residential areas in the country. Inland, Education City is home to university campuses, the city library, and some of the country's most impressive architecture. And Aspire Zone. It is the country's home of sport, featuring world-class facilities for football, swimming, and many more sports, as well as the country's historic stadium, Khalifa International Stadium. Qatar size is a huge advantage for quickly getting around the entire country. And the way Qatar's regions come together, each area has a little bit of everything. Starting at Qatar's northernmost point, Al Shamal's coastline touches both eastern and western sides of the country. Most of the region's land consists of abandoned villages and archaeological sites. And I especially encourage you to visit Al Zabara Fort and museum while in this region, along with many beaches found in this area, to really get a sense of the history of my country. Al Zubara sits right here on the western coast of Qatar. It's about 70 miles or 105 kilometers northwest of Doha, approximately an hour and a half drive away. And if we zoom into the village, we can see where the site lines the coastline. This is someone's old house in Al Zubara village, and it's believed that this village has been around since at least the 1760s. It was a key site for trade and pearling in the Arabian Peninsula in the 18th and 19th centuries. And it wasn't until 1938 when the Emir at the time, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Qasim Al Thani, decided to build a fort on top of the remains of the castle that once stood right here. This fort was used by the Qatari military until the 1980s. Once the Al Zabara village was rediscovered and archaeological excavations began, the fort found a new use as a museum 
about Al Zubara. Here you can explore the artifacts that have been found throughout the Al Zubara's excavations. These all speak to Al Zubara's history as a hub of trading and pearl diving. The practice of pearl diving in the Gulf goes back to about 7,000 years and is one of the oldest professions in Qatar. The pearl banks in the Arabian Gulf were plentiful. More importantly, the demand for pearls made it profitable. So you can imagine why it was so important for local economies. Next, we have the region of Al Khor. This region is known for its beautiful mangroves. Mangrove trees live in tidal pools along the coastlines of tropical and subtropical countries. While it looks like just a quiet swamp, something very important is happening here. This tangled mess of interlocked trees can store up to five times more carbon dioxide per square meter than tropical or boreal rainforests. That's incredible. And the roots and branches break the waves here, making this an incredibly tranquil place to hop in a kayak and explore the mangrove forests. The area of Al Shahaniya is known for its camel racing and oryx breeding. On the east coast, just above Doha, we have Al Ba'ain, home to Lusail City. Lusail is a really cool project to see in real life for anyone interested in sustainability and environmental protection practices, as this was one of the main goals kept in mind when building the city. Al Rayyan could be considered the sportiest of the regions. This area hosts several sports clubs and even three FIFA World Cup stadiums. And last but not least, Qatar's southernmost region is Al Wakra. When you visit, be sure to check out Al Khor Al Adid, the Inland Sea, which is a UNESCO recognized natural reserve and probably one of the coolest natural phenomena you will ever see. This is Sea Line, where all of these dunes are our playground and big cars like this help us enjoy what is known as dune bashing. And when you're here in Sea Lai, you can rent a quad bike yourself or an ATV to have a go at the dunes. You'll also be able to experience what falconry is and get a feel for what it was like to travel in the desert on the back of a camel. Not only are all corners of Qatar completely accessible by car, this accessibility is further supported by a highly safe and secure environment for people to move around in. So let's start with the beautifully designed Qatar Rail. There are three metro lines, red, green and gold. The lines are divided to different types of spots that you can access along them. Let's start with the red line, which is the coastal route. Along here you can stop off at several beaches, the umbrella walkway of Corniche Station, and Katara Cultural Village. Next is the Green Line, also known as the Educational Route. This line is where you'll find the Qatar National Library and the Mall of Qatar. And finally, the Gold Line. It's the historical route. This is where you'll find Suwagif, the National Museum, and Sports City. Qatar Rail is very affordable, and there are two pricing options. You can either choose the standard class, or if you want to travel in style, you can use the Gold Club. The Gold Club gives you access to nicer carriages, but both the card and the journey will cost you a little bit more, but you're doing it in style. It also comes with complimentary shuttle service, Metrolink, which connects you to landmarks within a five kilometer radius of the selected metro stations. There are also many touring companies like Discover Qatar, that can take you around the most renowned spots in the country. I'm Hamid Al Ammari. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about my country, and hopefully, I'll get to see you soon here in Doha. Hey guys, David here. Just want to mention that what you just watched is only a part of the full Qatar travel guide. It's available on brighttrip.com absolutely for free, so do go check it out.